Good evening. Thank you for joining us uh, on SBC. Here's the news at uh, this hour. The Deputy Chief Executive Officer of SBC, Cindy Weeds, has uh, given an explanation on the new political program which will be aired on SBC One starting from tomorrow night. These are programs of political parties registered with the Electoral Commission. This initiative is the result of discussions that we started with political parties back in 2019. Back then, all parties agreed to the initiative that they wanted the airtime to be able to produce one program. So we took it up again in 2020, around August, and again, it was all the parties were on board. However, as you recall, in October 2020, there was the elections planned, and we agreed to postpone the initiative and take it up again this year, 2020, 2021, and that's what we are doing. So what we are offering is that every month, we're going to offer an allocation of airtime to each registered political party. For this month, we have received three submissions, and these are due for airing starting tomorrow. These programs will be aired every last Thursday of the month, starting in the month of May, and all the parties will have 10 minutes on TV and 10 minutes on radio for their program. It will be in alphabetical order according to the name of the parties. So for this month we have LDS, we have One Seychelles, and we have US. It will be broadcast in that order, and then we will rotate in a cyclic manner so that next month there is a rotation happening. I would like to point out that this initiative forms part of a series of initiatives that we are coming up to give politics its rightful place on the SBC platform. Alongside the policy on press conferences that we launched at the end of February and all the in initiative, including news coverage, we feel that this will elevate the level of political discourse in the country. And the National Assembly has unanimously approved the ratification of the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the Communications Procedures. When presenting the motion to the Assembly this morning, the leader of government business, Bernard Georges, expounded on the many accomplishments that the country has made in the protection of children and their rights. He said that the document is one of three protocols under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child, which Seychelles has already signed. Now that the protocol has been ratified, Mr. George said that Seychelles needs to comply with requirements of this protocol, which includes the creation of a United Nations Commission on Children's Rights. This, he said, will allow children whose rights have been violated to be heard by an international body. Craft vendors at Beauvalon have won a temporary reprieve against orders to move their stalls elsewhere. Ten vendors at the beachfront site were told to relocate by SSI, the Société Seychelloise Internationale, and they've been told not to return. But after mediation by the Principal Secretary for Entrepreneurship, Angélie Quentin, permission was later granted. The authorities are expected to meet tomorrow to trash out arrangements for the vendors to sell their wares in future. New measures will soon be implemented to regularize the appropriate time for contractors to use leaf blowers. Contractors doing landscaping and cleaning will have between 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. to use such machine. This comes after complaints, including from hotels, that the noisy equipment is being used too early in the morning. Discussions between the Department of Environment and the Attorney General's Office have started so as to implement the measures and its sanctions as part of regulations under the 2016 Environment Act. The French ambassador in Seychelles, Dominique Mass, this afternoon visited the SFA laboratory that conducts various scientific research projects in collaboration with the French National Research Institute, IRD, 
SFA has been collaborating with IRD for the past 40 years in numerous research projects aimed at ensuring sustainability in fishing practices in the Seychelles EZ. The principal fisheries scientist at the SFA, Dr. Amir Ebrahim, says that there is a need for the SFA research laboratory to be upskilled so that the research work conducted can continue to inform policy decisions on fisheries. Looking more at a bigger picture, um, we hope to uh, engage a lot more stakeholders within, uh, within the SFA, and it has started. Um, you know, we, we're trying to form strong partnerships, for example, with SECAT, um, uh, with the University of Seychelles, and uh, other NGOs. And, you know, um, uh, I think the new direction of SFA believes that um, research should be the backbone of any management decision that is taking. So, you know, any decision that we, we, uh, we have to take with regards to quotas, with regards to uh, season, season, seasonality of, of, of fishing period, need to be backed up by science. And uh, it is a new vision that uh, the SFA is starting to recognize and to, and to spearhead. We'll have this and other news coming up at 8. Good evening.